Hello and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand Fundamental and Technical Analysis for the week ahead starting the 13th of August. So let's get into uh, this week's um, upcoming news. So next week, investors will eagerly follow the FOMC Minutes release for additional insights into the Fed's plan for the remainder of the year. So that involves um, obviously their interest rate hikes and whether they're going to be hiking or holding um, and even cutting some uh, analysts predict this year in the US retail sales and industrial production will also be in the spotlight elsewhere the upcoming week is poised to bring a flurry of significant economic releases including China industrial production and retail sales GDP and inflation for the eurozone Japan GDP growth and inflation Germany economic sentiment inflation uh, employment unemployment sorry and retail sales for the UK Canada CPI Australia unemployment data and interest rate decisions from the New Zealand, the RBNZ. So lots to um, uh, to look for this week's so market moving news, price moving news. And uh, for those of you who are in the private private mentoring Discord group, just to give you a quick reminder that I have released the members only weekly fundamental and weekly technical analysis, which goes into a lot more depth with the fundamentals and technicals. You can go into the trading videos channel for that one. So going to and starting off on the dollar index and really um, dollar index wise, um, Last week we had, it was all eyes on, on inflation and the US inflation metrics kind of were diverging and complicating the outlook for a cool down. So uh, inflation expectations unexpectedly fell in August, which was good news. But in the meantime, producer prices rose in July by more than forecast. So there are several different uh, inflation measures um, that are kind of diverging. Um, and that is important really because the Federal Reserve want to see inflation come down so that they can make, um, I guess, an easier decision when it comes to interest rates, whether they will are likely to hold um, or hike. If it's coming down, they're likely to hold. And if it's not and it remains sticky, then they could hike. And um, so it says here, the divergence suggests uneven path ahead for inflation that is otherwise moderating data out. Thursday showed an underlying measure of consumer prices posted its smallest back-to-back -back increase in two years that bolstered hopes that the Federal Reserve contain price pressures, which is inflation, without sparking a recession. And that is really the balancing act, right? And so uh, it says Friday's data are important to the central bank's calculus as to how they'll proceed with policy from here. While officials will take comfort in seeing inflation expectations coming down, several categories in the producer price index report feed directly into a separate inflation metric preferred by the Fed and they jumped in July. So um, I don't think the Fed's job is done just yet or it could be or could be not. It's very 50-50 at the moment. And I say 50-50, but on the uh, CME Fed Watch tool, the market seems to think that there's a 90% chance of a hold, right? Uh, in September, September the 20th, this is no change here and a 10% chance of a hike. But um, with inflation, uh, continuing uh, to kind of be sticky, there is the opportunity or the chance that within the next how many days, it's 38 days, this could obviously change. Right now with all the data that we have, it's saying 90%, but if you start to see this start to come lower and the probabilities come lower for a, for a hold, and in fact, that would mean that um, there is likely to be an increased probability of a hike, you could actually see the dollar start to increase in value and that would be driven more by obviously the data that comes out. So looking at the dollar index, um, you're you know really kind of seeing on the, on the daily time frame chart uh, any pullbacks into a level of um, demand really. I would say, um, and coupled demand with areas of uh, support and resistance as well, whether that's horizontal, diagonal dynamics, so that'd be a horizontal um, uh, support and resistance. So you can see where really price has been traded recently, support there, support there, it's got a little bit of resistance and then support in, within that demand zone. So then you're looking for trades in and around, if prices come in and around that area there, 
not necessarily in the dollar index, but you can use this as confluence prices come down to the 101s. Then you're looking for potential buys if you want to be a buyer of the dollar on other currency pairs if that aligns with other technicals on you know those uh, those currencies that you're looking to trade. Now, if you're looking to get short on the dollar, then um, again you're looking at this supply zone up above and then looking for some sort of bearish candle um, on on this area uh, with some. In, in anticipation of some sort of um, you know dollar weakness right on the technicals and some fundamentals as well so um, for me uh, it's, a, it's a difficult one the dollar I think against some currencies like for example the New Zealand dollar I think it's uh, still a buy um, but against something like the pound I'm not too sure I probably lean towards buying the pound uh, over the dollar so um, there are cases and reasons to buy the dollar but there are also reasons to short the dollar so um, and this happens right this is normal uh, not everything is an all-out buy or an all-out sell there are reasons to buy and sell so um, I'm leaning more towards the potential um, buy on the dollar but not against every currency so um, so yeah that's where we are uh, with that so either way now looking at the um, the dollar yen and the dollar yen is something that I am actually uh, bearish on. <clears throat> uh, so I'm quite bullish on the yen. Um, in the short term, I definitely understand that this this the one four four one four five level uh, may or may not hold. Now, um, when it comes to the um, the yen. The yen was, this week in Bloomberg was talking about yen dips to the weakest since 2008 against the euro and eyes 145 per dollar. So uh, the Jap uh, Japan first intervened last year when the yen reached 146 per dollar, right? And so um, if we scroll down to this chart here, you know, we're, we're at a level, we're potentially approaching the 146s where Japan, and I'll zoom in a little bit more, conducted yen buying intervention for the first time since 1998 now um, the Bank of Japan do not want to see the yen weaken and because a weaker yen and a devalued yen adds to inflation and what central banks are trying to do is keep inflation at their target which is two percent now if inflation if again like I said in, um, prices keep rising and go above that then the central bank typically tends to step in or can step in and it did um, you know last year in September so uh, with that being said there may be an invisible hand which won't allow prices to go beyond maybe certain zones right so um, you, you're starting to look at an area like the 147s 146s uh, from a technical analysis perspective, there's supply there, and then you've also got actually, in fact, I've drawn supply of pretty much this whole zone. So the higher price goes, yeah, is the more likely you are to see the central uh, bank of Japan uh, look to actually push prices to the downside. So this has nothing to do with. Um, you know, uh, some sort of technical pattern is the cause of a reversal, right? This is, um, you know, they, they, there are things going on beyond the price chart that you have to be aware of. And so um, as prices go higher, central bank intervention tends to come into play. Um, well, in this case on the yen. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for, for a potential um short trades so there are is there's obviously an immediate opportunity to look for some short trades here <clears throat> if that doesn't work out then look for uh, what well, i'm looking for anyway um short trades in and around um, these areas in anticipation of um uh, the central bank intervening but if you do want to continue buying the dollar then you're looking at that area of demand right there and then pretty much a potential pullback into that zone, the one, four, twos, before looking at getting long. And in fact, if you're gonna add a level of horizontal uh, support,
support and resistance you can see that level has also been traded there so not only are there supply and demand traders in there or demand traders in there there'll be support and resistance traders in there because you've got a level that has been traded there and then bounced off of uh, the uh, that area the 142s so dollar yen um for me looking to be a uh, short trade uh dollar swiss dollar swiss i think is um something is it's, it's quite interesting if i'm looking to be a buyer of the dollar um over the swiss franc which there are reasons to i would <coughs> sorry i would really look for areas around the pull back down into that zone there currently we are um uh, bouncing off of this long-term level of resistance and so um, but prices haven't really sold off they've been supported at the moment there are intraday trades that are kind of beyond this area um, or the scope of this video which is more you know stop hunts etc but um, from a supply daily supply and demand perspective we pull back into that zone there if you're looking to get short price hasn't really proved that there's strong supply here so at the moment the nearest area unless prices actually pull you know do sell off then pull back into an area of supply and then you're looking for a short trade or you're looking for the nearest short trade to be up at these highs if you're trading uh supply and demand there's obviously you know resistance in and around that area as well but um, i don't necessarily trade uh support and resistance solely first comes uh, supply and demand then the addition of um, any kind of a technical analysis like uh, support and resistance so um moving on to the dollar cad and the uh the canadian dollar uh this week really hasn't held up um too well kind of pulled back a bit and this is um kind of due to the fact that uh, Canadian interest rate expectations have uh, lowered so you've got the movement in uh, basis points and that's plus 25 points in September's um, probability for a rate hike of 25 basis points is at the moment 20% so um, doesn't look great for the um, for the uh, Canadian dollar at the moment in terms of uh, currency appreciation if you're looking to buy the Canadian dollar but um, you do have um, uh, the, the, the US dollar and because inflation is kind of sticky it looks like the dollar is kind of appreciating against the um, the uh, CAD for the minute right until we find some sort of auction or some sort of range now this could be the top of the range let's see uh, what happens here this is a decent area I do like this area as a technical area to look for a short but that means that you'd have to really be convinced that the uh, Canadian dollar is a you know buy over the US dollar which personally I'm not really convinced so um, I'm gonna I'm staying out of this trade it's not really on my list of things to trade there is in fact uh, some demand um, in here so if you are looking for a pullback uh, I think that area there is really nice for a potential uh, buy on the US dollar against the Canadian dollar. So you've got that New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Um, this makes all the sense in the world to get short at the moment. And um, again, it was there was kind of D-Day, of course, with, with inflation, but with inflation remaining a bit sticky um, and the uh, RBNZ not looking to hike rates anytime soon, I do think that um, the, the path of least resistance is to the downside there is now uh, some hidden supply which kind of covers that area there and really I think it's just a move back up to uh, this area somewhere around here even the highs there before looking at getting short and um, yeah I think there is also, also uh, an area a level of support and resistance within that top end of that supply uh, zone that has been traded you can pull that back and you can see it's been traded there as well it's been traded there so there are institutions definitely buying and selling doing business around there and so uh, anything any pullbacks into that area is nice you've also got from an intraday perspective i think you've also got that level there so you could go down into like the one hour the 30 minute to 15 minute if you trade those time frames and look for you know trades either in and around that 
zero five area or six one twenties. I think the six one twenties, six one tens are probably going to be the better areas to look for a um, a trade if you're looking to take that to the short side. Um, the pound dollar, so pound dollar. Uh, fundamentally, we've got the UK economy surprises with strongest growth in more than a year. So figures indicate momentum that fans case for more rate hikes in manufacturing, construction and consumer spending all stronger. So more rate hikes by the Bank of England um, that's being supportive of the um, of the pound at the moment. There is some uh, some news this week. Uh, I think we've also got, uh, what have we got? We've got unemployment rate, uh, inflation rate year on year as well, and retail sales. So um, as long as that data does continue to support rate hikes, you should see uh, the pound appreciate. Now against the, the dollar, you may see you know uh, prices be limited to the, kind of the upside. I don't necessarily expect it to kind of trend to the upside unless, of course, the Fed start indicating that there is, um, they are definitely on hold. But I do think the downside is definitely limited in terms of um, you know the moves to the downside. So I think any price if price comes down to uh, to here or down to the one two fives, I think that would be a nice buying opportunity for the pound against the dollar as long as the uh, pounds. Um, uh, data does support the buying so at the moment it does there's a nice area of support and resistance as well so not only you've got you're definitely some decent demand here you've also got um, some support and resistance within that area or horizontal support and resistance so um, nice uh, technically euro uh, dollar now euro is at the moment um, in a bit of a, a tricky place you do have Europe's rising inflation risk gauge is a headache for the ECB so long-term market measures show ECB will struggle with 2% goal so that basically means that they're likely to continue to hike yeah and it says the moves uh, come as ECB approaches the end of its hiking cycle so all central banks are you know approaching the end of their hiking cycle but there's a there's a gauge of inflation um, that that is measured and it looks like it's the highest since 2010 on Monday so the um, central bank's goal is to get inflation back down to 2% target and so um, uh, they could they are likely to continue hiking now there's also this as well bond traders fear ECB hawks as energy jitters return to Europe and the gauge for future European inflation risk is steadily climbing ING and Rabobank caution on bond steepening trades so um, there was natural gas that ended up um, um, I think rising by about 30% if I remember correctly uh, I think it was somewhere in and around here but um, but yeah so with, with commodity prices rising that also potentially can add to uh, inflationary pressures it says here money markets are currently pricing in a 40% chance of a 25 basis point hike from the ECB in September with a further 66 basis points of cuts priced in for next year Rabobank echoed the likelihood that the ECB will need to show more determination to deal with inflation and that basically means being more hawkish given the risk of further upward energy shocks and so um yeah, energy prices, energy shocks coming into the market um, are likely to push the ECB towards hiking. And so, if you have, you know, um, uh, the ECB hiking and uh, that's seen as appreciative of a currency, typically, then um, the downside is likely to be limited. <clears throat> So looking at the, um, the downside potential, could see prices pull back to at least the 108.50. Some banks are saying that it, it, potentially prices could go down to the 107.50 or even the 107s, at least in the short term. But uh, that also does depend upon uh, what happens in the, uh, in the US. But um, for now, I do think that these levels here Think decent. You got an okay level there. That's been traded. Yeah, and then you've got um, an area here as well. So um, any pullbacks 
uh, into these zones are decent from a daily demand perspective. And again, the guys will know as well that there is a stop hunt level in and around here, the lows of here. So you don't necessarily need to trade with uh, daily demand when taking uh, things like stop hunts or CPRs. Uh, setups and so um yeah the, the the euro dollar bit of a tricky one um at the moment i don't expect major upside or major downside to be fair um so you can trade it either way there's reasons to buy it or sell the euro dollar the uh, euro yen so again we've had a bit of euro strength and um the euro's bit of the, the yen is, has been a bit weak uh, so far last week but I think again that may be uh, capped if the Bank of Japan start to get involved in uh, in intervening in the currency and so any pullbacks into uh, this zone here is going to be uh, if you're looking to buy the euro is going to be decent now if you're looking to short um, zooming out I think the nearest level going back out to the weekly is probably somewhere around here. But that's from you know August two thousand and eight. We haven't seen prices this high since two thousand and eight, right? Yeah. So um, it's it's very difficult to say you know you want to short into basically you're in no man's land around here. There is the possibility though, um, and the guys know the setup that there is a stop hunt. Uh, this is a large stop hunt of an iceberg order and uh, if prices start to come back inside then um, that could be seen as a really nice stop hunt on a daily time frame chart not too many traders if any traders really kind of talk about you know uh, this area here most traders would think that that level is now gone breakout traders are you know caught well, what's it caught they're not caught yet but they're in that um that trade at the moment and so um i do think that liquidity has been taken up Above the market, if the intention is actually for the market to kind of move to the downside. But let's see, a bit more of a trickier trade to be fair. But if you're bullish on the yen, then you know and you know about the stop hunt setups and, and, and entry triggers, then I think that's going to be a nice um, uh, short trade to the downside. Euro pound, euro pound again. This was a really nice trade setup level, level, level. A nice supply, fresh area of supply prices came up. There was some uh, uh, market moving news, which was basically GDP came in better than expected, as we've already covered. And then prices have gone to the downside. Now, I think the downside may be a little bit limited. Um, I'm my bias is definitely towards more towards buying the uh, pound over the euro but if the euro start getting aggressive with their rate hikes then again we could see limited downside uh, maybe down to the end uh, of these uh, of this auction this range but um, i wouldn't expect it to necessarily trend you know further beyond that i think any pullbacks though um in terms of uh, buying the pound if prices go higher do think that these are really nice areas to look for uh, some short trades providing that of course the uh, the pound is more of the dominant um central bank and the more hawkish central bank out of the two but if you do want to be a buyer of the euro then that's going to be the first area to look for some buyers and you do have some supportive support and resistance in that area um aussie um dollar now again uh yeah the the Part of this resistance has been really to the downside with the Aussie dollar. And um, yeah, you can see this. Uh, I saw something the other day, which I was talking about. In fact, the uh, RBA may actually look to potentially uh, cut rates, right? So the market is actually uh, pricing in a decrease to 3.85, uh, which is uh, pretty much a bit of a shock. Um, the last data was taken on the 11th of August. Um, the RBA actually uh, were talking in their announcement saying that there's the capacity to high rates, but it looks like the market doesn't necessarily believe that they will and they're actually pricing in um, cuts, which is uh, very, very surprising. So um, looking at uh, the price action on this, uh, for me, I would probably still look towards uh, going short um, unless the RBA are definitely hawkish, um, 
I was starting to position myself actually to go long on the uh, on the Australian dollar uh, in anticipation of a hawkish central bank. But since I saw uh, this, um, I've kind of you know held back now. Um, I've had to kind of pause on that thinking if the market is actually pricing in cuts. And so yeah, um, if they're pricing in cuts, I think then we would have to see this happen. But this also as well can change. It's not set in stone. If data comes out that you know changes right that that indicates that inflation is sticky that the central bank are looking to hike rates this is going to change right this is the, all dependent upon what happens uh, fundamentally so um, it's not necessarily a leading indicator it's more um, an indicator that just shows what the current thinking is based on the data that we know and that's what you know things like the um, CME FedWatch tool is as well as well as the the Canadian interest rate expectations. They're looking at what we look at in terms of you know the fundamentals, you know interest rate hikes, holds, you know bond yields, etc. And then they're pricing in the probability of that information um, on what they think the central bank will do. So that's really and these are just users confirmation tools, right, to your trade idea. So um, again, looking at the Australian dollar bit of conflicting information the market's not believing the central bank will hike they like they could in, in fact uh, start to cut rates as small as a chance as it is so um for me uh, i think the continued downside is um is where i would probably more lean towards now until that narrative does uh, change and uh, the market does price out those rate cuts moving towards the final uh, gold and so um, with gold, there was uh, some news out of China. Central bank adds more gold for a ninth straight month, and China raises gold reserves for a ninth straight month in July as central bank purchases continue to underpin prices of the precious metals. So, um, that is something that is supportive of gold, but um, at the moment, it doesn't like gold is having its um, having its way in terms of appreciation. I think later on in the year, as the dollar, you know, and all central uh, banks start to hold rates, I think gold may actually start to, um, and is likely to start to move to the upside. And, and central banks really just looking at this as a, a buying opportunity. And so, um, yeah, I think with gold, I think technically this is a really nice level. The 1900 to 1890s, 1880s, I think is really, really nice. You can tell that there's been business done before. This was seen as a bargain price as prices move to the upside. And so I do think that that is actually quite nice for a now for a potential sell. But this does also depend upon uh, dollar strength or dollar weakness. So if dollar strength continues in the short term uh, and is supported, then you're likely to see prices come to the downside. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see prices actually come down to the 1840s around here. But um but yeah, as we go into the second half of the year, into the final quarters of the year, I think we should see gold get supported. So those are really your options. Pull back into as well. You've got a nice supply zone here. Um, this area here has been traded as a bit of support and resistance as well. So uh, there's some confluence in this area, right, as a pullback into the zone, right? And then looking for maybe some sort of intraday uh, trade within that area of um, supply and support and resistance. So you can always tighten it up and look at it like that as well. So on the daily, you've got like a wider zone, but when you look at the intraday one, you've got a very accurate level within that area of supply. So yeah, some nice levels there technically, but again, it's just determined upon the direction and really what the market expects gold to do in the short, medium or long term, which is driven by, you know, my favorite word, fundamental analysis. So anyways, guys, um, stay tuned. I've got another video after this, which is a group call from last week, which explains the effect of GDP on, um, on interest rates. I think you might uh, like it and it might be helpful. So it's the end of the weekly analysis, but I've got about a 20 minute, um, a snippet of a group call um, that we had. Um, this group call was, was probably about maybe around about an hour and a half long, but it's a 20 minute um, uh, snippet from that 
uh, group call last week, which actually was outlining uh, why the dollar may appreciate. So, I um, mean, it looks like that has actually come true. So, uh, I hope you have a great trading week. Take care, and I'll speak to you all soon. Right. Welcome all. Welcome, welcome, Lawrence. Welcome, Alexandros and uh, and Liam. Uh, yes. So, group call, 2nd of August. I thought I'd have it, have it in the evening. Um, haven't had it in the evening for a while. Um, and I know some people in the UK prefer uh, the evening, so I thought I'd switch it up for this week. So, the 2nd of August, 2023. And before we get into the... Um, uh, the currency summary report. I wanted to go over something I thought was quite important, um, and um, yeah, it's basically how GDP forecasts affect uh, currencies. Uh, welcome, uh, Ahmad. I uh, hope you're doing well. And um, yeah, so how GDP forecasts affect currencies, right? And uh, we're going to talk about the dollar uh, a bit later, but um, it's important to know. A few things. So, a question for you guys. In a recession, uh, what does the central bank typically typically do um, with interest rates? Ahmad says, oh, you have so many names. Okay, so what are you, um, what's your alias in, uh, what's your Discord um, name? Is it still Ahmad? I don't remember. Sun oh, Sunny, how you doing, mate? You're right. Yeah, so uh, Mr. Diligent, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, in it, so, so the question is, in a recession, what does the central bank typically do with interest rates? Does it hike it, hold it, or cut it? It cuts it. Cut it. John says cut. Anyone else disagree with John? Anyone else disagree with John? Yep, yeah, no. Hold? Mm, yeah, potentially, of course, depends on, depending on upon the inflation, but... If we're in a, if if we're in a, yeah, it does depend, but typically, and that's why I kind of highlighted typically, yeah, in a recession, yeah, you know, normally you will have some sort of cut to basically boost the economy, get interest rates down, um, you know, to help businesses borrowing and lending, you know, is cheaper, etc. And so uh, to stimulate the economy, what banks typically do with interest rates it's again it's not 100 percent. it's not all the time um but in a uh, uh, you have uh, uh, rate cuts are synonymous with um with uh, recessions right and so understanding that the next question right would be you know let's say for example in quarter one of 2023 earlier this year the market consensus was for a country's economy to enter into a recession in q4 of 2023 i said the end of this year now in q3 yeah the market consensus has changed its forecast to a recession you know of a recession to q4 of 2024 so before it was to be end of this year now it's the end of next year that's what they're forecasting is this expected to be so um is is the currency expected to be supported by the forecast yes or no Hopefully you understand the question. I'll read that again if you want me to. Does anyone not understand the question? So is the currency expected to be supported by the forecast? I mean, beginning of the year, 2023, the market consensus was for a country's economy to enter into a recession in Q4 of 2023, so by the end of the year. Now, in Q3, the market has changed its forecast of a recession, yeah? Instead of Q3 of, sorry, Q4 of 2023, it's now forecasting Q4 of 2024. Is the currency expected to be supported by the forecast? Bearing in mind what we had in our first question. Alexandra says, yes. Anyone else? Liam says, yes. Yep, that's it, exactly. It is expected to be supported simply because what we know to be true is that if banks typically cut rates in a recession, if now a recession is going to take a bit longer, yeah, then the market has to price out 
a recession, right? Because it was pricing in a recession, you know, towards the end of this year. And now it's saying, well, no, in fact, you know, GDP is holding up stronger than expected. So now we're thinking maybe Q4 or it, the recession is going to be prolonged. It's going to, you know, maybe be a bit later. So that is actually supportive of a currency. So now that has to be, you know, the recession has to be priced out of the market rather than priced into the market or I say priced into the market, but priced in. Um, and so which is supportive of a currency. Yeah. And so I like to be a bit visual. Right. And so how you should kind of look exactly, Alexandros, this is why the dollar is being supported. Right. So I like to typically look uh, or kind of visualize certain things. Right. So imagine we've got um, a chart here. Yeah. Now, what we know to be true is let's say we've got currency A and currency B. Yeah. And currency A, this is going to be inflation. Actually, I'm going to have to let me draw this again. We've got two charts, matter of fact. All right. We've got two charts. Let me draw two charts. One is inflation. Right, one is inflation. And the other one is going to be GDP. Right. So let me sorry, go to my pen tool. Right. So we've got uh, let me let Pierre David in. Right. So on the inflation chart. Right. And we've got GDP, and this is obviously time, right? Time, time, yeah. So we have central bank, let's say for example, central bank A is expected to kind of, um, inflation space is expected to, you know, rise a little bit, kind of tail off, yeah? And let's say for example, we've got the 2% target, which is about here, yeah? And it's forecast to reach their 2% target at some point in, let's say, for example, Q1 of next year, yeah, of, 20, of 2024. And then we have um, another central bank, which is, again, probably looking to hike maybe another, maybe once again, right? Um, and their inflation is also expected to potentially come down, um, you know, to maybe their 2%, I don't know, let's say Q2, right? Q2 is expected to reach their, their 2% target. So that's bank B, yeah, is Q2. And bank A is Q1. Right, that's that's the that's the forecast, right? So we're in obviously Q three right now. Yeah, this is where we are right now. Now, you also have Bank A. Now GDP is expected to potentially go into a um, a recession. Let's say, for example, by the end of the year right so growth has been trending slowly trending down right and this is where a recession is expected to happen and if this is let's say for example this is q uh, uh this is q1 right so that's bank a q1 expected to be in negative growth right two quarters of negative growth or one at least one quarter of negative growth right and then by q2 for example you know, that's going to be the where the recession is. And then you have Bank B, who is expected to potentially look to flatline and maybe go into a recession in maybe Q4. Yeah. Now, actually, in fact, Q, I'm going to do Q... Yeah, we'll leave it at that, all right? So from an inflation perspective, yeah, B 
both central banks have got inflation coming back down to 2% on average, right? By at least, you know, Q1 or Q2. So when you think to yourself, okay, which one should I buy, for example, or which one should I sell? Um, it's, it's kind of 50-50, right? It's more of a closer call. But when it comes to GDP, on the other hand, which currency or which you know bank a or b would you likely buy and which one would you likely sell would you likely buy a or sell a or buy b right buy b exactly yeah buy b because because if you know, country A and central bank A are expecting a recession by at least Q1 or Q2, right? Typically, what should happen to interest rates and inflation? What should inflation do? Is that the inflation down and a cut? Absolutely. Absolutely, right? And so... Think about this from the dollar's perspective. And as Alexandros kind of led to it, is that although inflation is coming down, yeah, to the dollar's 2% target, yeah, even though the dollar's coming down to 2% target, what you have is the fact that you have now the recession being kicked into the long grass, right, which is now supportive, actually, of the dollar. The market is pricing out potential rate cuts which would have been triggered yeah by a recession so that is now supportive of you know a currency so regardless of what is happening so for example europe have got maybe one or two more cuts yeah exactly and they're not suffering from stagflation unlike euro who are at risk right that's exactly it um um uh, sunny right so although the euro may hike one more time yeah, once more in September, or they may not, right? It depends because they're, they're kind of on the fence depending on the data. The reason why, and I've been saying this for months now, is that, you know, to, to watch GDP because GDP needs to be able to support, right? Not only inflation, obviously, but it has to support the rate cuts. And so if you have, as you said, stagflation is where you have, you know, rising inflation or at least sticky inflation, but you have a contracting economy, it's difficult for the central bank to continue hiking aggressively because as we know, hiking rates, yeah, contracts the economy. Yeah. And so what they what Europe don't want to do at the moment is make, you know, the recession, the impending recession, because every and the recession is impending because, you know, we have got an economic cycle, right? You have boom. And you have bust, yeah. It's coming, right? This is the uh, the society we live in. It's going to be booms and busts, right? You can't stop it from happening. It's the economics, the business cycle. And so, but you but you want to you want to try to prolong the recession, yeah. The recessionary part of the bust cycle, yeah, the bust part of the cycle, and you don't want to speed that up by hiking rates. Yeah. And so they're very, very cautious. What they want is inflation to come down naturally rather than the um, rather than it being induced by hiking rates, because otherwise in the future, what's going to end up happening is this where you have recessions now being forecasted sooner rather than later. Yeah, because remember, all central banks now, we just had the Australian dollar hold rates. We've had um, uh, the new. We had some New Zealand. I'll get. I'll get into all of this in, in a little bit. But we had New Zealand. Um, you know, jobs data come out, which came in lower than expected. Um, which basically, well, sorry, unemployment came in uh, higher than expected. I think it was unemployment anyway. And um, basically, that justified the fact that they're probably not likely to to hike rates. Um, and other central banks, like you know, the U.S., the Federal Reserve. 
are still kind of on the fence with regards to hiking rates or holding rates. At the moment, a hold is being priced in more than hikes. But at the end of the day, every central bank now is probably on one more rate hike. Yeah. So if they're everyone, every central bank is on one rate hike or they're holding in the short term, you're probably you can probably see some divergence between maybe central banks that have held rates and one and maybe some that are still hiking rates. Yeah. Or hiking or going to hike one more time. But that divergence is now diminishing because by September, October, November, by the end of this year, most central banks should be done providing inflation is on its way down to the 2% target, right? We're going to we're going to assume this. Yeah. So then the next narrative becomes what? Who is going to be first to avoid a recession? And at the moment, it looks like between just picking on obviously Europe and the US, exactly. It looks like bank B. Right? in Europe not doing so well yeah so in the short term and how does that translate into price what you typically will see from a, from a price perspective or you may see in a, from a price perspective is um, you know you, you can see arguments or, or, or the arguments but you can see uh, um, you can see it both ways in terms of buys and sells what you should see is more of an auction or ranging market you might see something like this right where price might be making its way lower or higher but what you won't see is an out and out trending market like what we've seen yeah now this is providing that everything obviously lines up right you have the wild card which is china yeah so if china start to grow then money's gonna go out of the US dollar, right? That's just how it goes in terms of, you know, investment, um, you know, dollar being more of a safe haven currency, etc. right? But if China at the moment is not supporting Europe, is not supporting the commodity currencies, like the Australian dollar, the Canadian dollar, for example, New Zealand dollar, right? It's not supporting these currencies at the moment. So as long as this scenario continues to me, the edge, it's not an out and out buy, not an out and out sell, you know, it's not 100 and, you know, 10%, right? This is just deal with dealing with probabilities. At the moment, I think the dollar is being supported, yeah, by the fact that at least in the short term, um, the fact that we, you know, uh, there, there is going to be, you know, the, the analogy is a soft landing, yeah, it's a soft landing. Yeah. Now there there is going to be a period where you probably might see the dollar start to you know contract and maybe it might be a week or two where the dollar starts to fall. But overall, you're going to see, or what I predict anyway, or forecast is going to be a range of some sort. Right? It's going to be a range. The dollar will be a buy at certain levels, and in certain ways, the upside is going to be capped, but simply because of the fact that. You know they're not good they're going to be the first to kind of maybe we'll say first but they might hold rates you know before europe yeah but then as i said the narrative is going to switch to gdp so be on the lookout for that change right <laughs> eagle is always saying that you got um uh as as eagle always says and i've got to agree the dollar is king whoa kings get dethroned right so, you know, you've got to be careful with, yeah, exactly, for now, right? At the moment, and, I, and even say to say it's king is, is, is a tough one because um, there are, it's not an, as I said, it's not an out and out buy. But if I'm looking, you know, let's say, for example, you know, towards the end of the year, three to six months, yeah, into the future, right? And just looking at the overall trend of things, between you know Europe and and the US dollar, I think the upside to the euro is capped at the moment. I do think it is, but again, the wild card is China, right? That I think holds the key <coughs> to um, yeah, exactly. Be be on alert, right? So this is just a trade idea, and the data needs to support the narrative, right? trade idea 
must support, um, sorry, must support the narrative. The data must support the trade idea. Yeah. So as long as you still have supportive data, yeah, for your for the trade idea to buy the US dollar, then that. It's cool. So we had, for example, um, is it is it the ADP uh, jobs, for example, that came out way above um, consensus, and we saw the dollar, you know, basically rise. It's because the market is pricing out a recession, which means less need in the future for rate cuts. So that is being priced out. Although in the short term we could say, all right, then well, they might be holding sooner. That's a negative in comparison to Europe who are you know still continuing to potentially hike but over the you know the medium term you can say in fact the dollar won't be you know the euro the for me anyway the euro is not going to fly to like 115 do you know what i mean or 120s that's going to be um it's going to be a bit of a stretch at the moment considering the data that we all that we have at the moment and as long as the dollar keeps the final uh, the data, then ultimately, uh, that's basically what we have, right? So, 